Uh, I'm John Lawn. I'm the editor of Food Management Magazine. I'm up at the um, annual UMass uh, College Chefs Conference uh, in Amherst, UMass Amherst. And I'm here with one of the instructors today who's been doing workshop demonstrations all afternoon uh, with some of the chefs up here. This is Neela Punnies. She's the owner of Neela's Contemporary India Cooking, a restaurant that's been open for about two years in downtown Napa Valley. And before that, she was the owner of the Bombay Cafe in Los Angeles. She's always specialized in India cuisine. She had some wonderful demonstrations today. And I thought we'd ask her just a few questions about what makes Indian cuisine authentic, what we could do in this country in uh, kind of on-site environments to offer Indian flavor profiles, but perhaps not be trapped with the stereotypical image that so many people have of Indian cuisine. So let me start with this question, Neva. Yeah. Tell me quickly about some of the key spices and pantry items you'd find if you were trying to prepare more authentic food in the Indian tradition? Well, in order to prepare, uh, prepare really authentic Indian food, you do need a lot of spices. You need um, cumin, coriander, turmeric, uh, red chili, or cayenne. Uh, and those can be in powder form. But also you would need the cumin seeds. You would need the coriander seeds. You also need garam masala in its original form, which is whole spices. or And then you toast them and make them into a ground garam masala. And those include cinnamon, cloves, black pepper, uh, cardamom, black cardamom, uh, star anise, a little bit of mace, a little bit of nutmeg. Again, those are also a variation of garam masala that go from region to region. So, But I think the ones that I mentioned at the beginning, if you have cumin, coriander, cayenne, or red chili from India, uh, turmeric, mustard seeds, you've got a lot already. I think a lot of people think cumin is a Mexican spice, don't they? I mean... Yes, I, because they do actually have it in Mexico. In fact, if you go to a market and you buy cumin, it's coming in from Mexico. You go to an Indian grocery store and you buy, ask them if they've gotten it from India or from Mexico, there will be a difference. The um, cumin from India is a little bit less brownish in color, a little fatter, and is not as... Uh, sometimes, you know, when you have a complaint that I don't like curry powder, you're tasting that extra cumin in there, and can be a little powerful, uh, whereas the Indian cumin is not as pungent. Well, let, let's come back to that in a minute, but um, another thing you mentioned this morning in your presentation was the uh, traditional style of serving uh, in a communal meal, yes. and I think people would be interested in hearing that, because it, it's not exactly um, family style, but it's not exactly individual plates either. Yeah, well, in India we eat on a brown large plate, almost like a charger, called a thali. And it could, probably in the days gone by, it was probably made of stone. Later it became copper or, or brass. And today it's obviously made with stainless steel, much more sanitary, easier to cons uh, keep clean. And then they have little bowls that are called katoris. So every aspect of your meal is served in those little bowls. And thus you have almost like an a la carte meal. That is, but it's yours specifically. You have your rice in the center, you have your bread, you have your bowls of either your lentils or your vegetables, whether they're cooked in a gravy or whether they're cooked with just dry spices. And uh, if you have got some protein, uh, that'll be in another bowl. Now, if your protein has been barbecued or made into a kebab, then it won't be in a bowl, it'll be directly on the plate itself any of your yogurt relishes, raitas, any of your chutneys, any of your pickles, they're all on this plate. So you have the option of using your rice and your bread as the vehicle for that individual taste of either the vegetable or the meat or the lentil uh, to enjoy it with. So it becomes like the spoon. You know, in India, we don't use utensils. We use our fingers. And people wonder, how do you use your rice? How do you eat with your fingers? And there's a little bit of etiquette to that, too. So the wet ingredients sort of fo help you form a, a little spoonful of morsel of food with the, the rice. Bread. The bread actually you use Scoops. as a scoop. Yes. Yeah. So. All right. Um, now, another comment you made was that uh, people misunderstand Indian cuisine because they imagine that Indian cuisine is curry and rice, curry and rice, and they've had such poor experiences a lot of times with curry and rice because it was poorly prepared or some other reason that uh, they really are a little leery of trying Indian cuisine. You mentioned it was one of the um, 
more slowly on the uptake in this country as we become interested in global cuisines. Indian hasn't been adapted quite as fast as some of the others. To speak about this curry and rice issue, will you? Well, I think first of all we have to define what is an Indian curry. And I think the problem is that most people, when they think of curry, they're thinking of that jar of that yellow powder that says curry powder on it. And so immediately their reaction is negative. The problem with that jar is, first of all, they think it's a spice, but it's really not. It's a blend of spices. But an actual curry is more of a stew. So you've created a spice base with aromatics such as onions, tomatoes, ginger, green chili, garlic, yogurt, cream, whatever depending on the region. And then you create, used your whole spices and or your ground spices, and you've come up with this lovely sort of paste, which then becomes the sauce base. And we don't use stock. We use water to either thin it out, or we let the meat cook in that and exude its own liquid and create its own stock or its own stew. And uh, so I think people come in with this vision of I'm getting something out of that yellow jar and that's going to resem resemble that curry chicken salad. And so the misunderstanding of that exists. And of course then those who've tried it in a lot of restaurants where they go out and buy a pre-mix curry and don't do it the authentic way, it leaves a little bitter taste in your mouth. And I can understand them not wanting to eat it, but I think they need to try other well, you mentioned working with uh, students who came to this country from India and how they had mentioned to you that the, the, the curries and the other Indian foods they had just didn't seem to be authentic. Exactly. What, what, uh, would you, what would you do if you were trying to be more authentic? Well, I would first of all encourage you to work to, to get a good recipe and start with the, 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 the correct process of making that curry paste. And, and you don't really have to have a mixed powder. Good, uh, you know, you start with your, your browning of your onions, your ginger, your garlic, or your aromatics, and adding the ground spices that you have to the degree that they're supposed to be added, and then adding the meat to it. And it, it may seem like, oh God, I have to open six or seven jars of spices to create, and why can't I just open this one jar that has a curry powder? But it's important that the proportions be accurate, and they're not in a curry powder. You also said that uh, people's curry uh, uh, spice profile would change by region, and I imagine as the dishes are regional in nature, yes. that's part of the reason no standard curry flavor is going to no. work, right? Every household will have a different way of making a curry. Of course, there are some basic rules to say a Punjabi curry from the northwest or a Rajasthani curry from the little bits further south of it, and then further south you go down to uh, the the tip, the peninsula of, of India, you get into a lot more coconut. Uh, you go to the east towards Bengal, you get a lot of nigella. Uh, some will use less garlic, some will use less green chili, some will use less uh, ginger and enhance the other spices. But even though the countrywide, the spices are the same, the combination of the spice changes, which then alters the flavor of the curry. One last question. Um, in your demonstration, uh, you said, so we're not going to make a curry today, but we're going to take the flavor profile of India and make a simple dish that's not too complicated to do, and it's a good one to show, the, to illustrate the, the basics of Indian cooking. Now, the, one of the ones you had was? Well, well I demonstrated a bengan deva. Bengan is in, uh, eggplant, and deva is the sauce that I have for it. This actually is a recipe that I uh, came up with from based on loosely based on another recipe from India, uh, which is a yogurt and eggplant uh, relish, um, and I used whole spices and curry leaves. Now they're spelled different. It's K A R I, and they're uh, widely uh, available at almost every Indian grocery store. And today, with you know uh, mail order, you can get anything shipped to you. Uh, they have a wonderful uh, flavor, very verdant very aromatic um, flavor, and I used five spices. And I used fenugreek for a little bitter, I used fennel for sweetness, I used nigella for almost that camphor sweetness, I used cumin for that earthy flavor, and coriander, again, a little bit earthy, but a little sweeter than the cumin. And I just used these five spices, and I released the aroma of those in some hot oil, instead of using the powder form. 
and this flavored the tomato, which I then used as the spread over grilled eggplant and then further topped it with the ginger and garlic infused yogurt. Well, we all tried it. It was delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure.